this is E2070, week 3, lecture 3. So the first lecture of this week was a review for exam 1. The second lecture was exam 1. So now we're going to start chapter 7, which is RC and RL, first order circuits. So we're going to go from the idea of resonance in second order and, well, we did second order circuits, but resonance can also occur in higher order circuits. So we're going to go from resonance to first order circuit. So the way we will do this, we'll split this across two lectures. Uh, uh, the syllabus shows the split across multiple lectures. So, but the concepts are simple enough that we can cover them in one lecture. The next lecture, I will do some examples. Okay, and these are the lectures that will be posted online. For the rest of the lectures, we'll do examples, answer homework questions, multi sim simulation, etc. Okay, so what are the concepts? The concepts are basically threefold, all right? So RC and RL, so resistor capacitor and resistor inductor circuits are modeled by first order differential equations. Now we are talking about linear R and linear L and linear C. So since we're dealing with stable linear systems, that is we'll assume that R is not negative. Our solutions are simply uh, decaying exponential functions of time. However, one of the most important points about this chapter is that we're assuming constant input functions, okay? Later in the course, and this is actually the only idea left after we do first order circuits, we, that is the Laplace transform is the idea that will allow us to solve for a response due to arbitrary inputs, okay? Now, why is the, what is the reason we start with constant input functions? Three main things, all right? Number one, we have already studied steady state response due to sinusoids, that is E2060. That's point A. Point B is it leads to, uh, just using constant input functions, will help us understand steady state time domain behavior of capacitor and inductor. And it'll also lead us to understand behavior across discontinuities for both the capacitor and the inductor. So let's get started by number one. There it goes, crashed. I don't know if that's a bad omen, but. Number one is the capacitor Let's look at the device model of this. It is a device that establishes a relation between Q, between charge, let me just write charge, and voltage, okay? In terms of circuit theory, what we have is, this is a, here's a circuit symbol for a linear capacitor. We're, again, we're not going to cover nonlinear devices, okay? nonlinear capacitors. So usually, the relationship is in terms of I through the device and V across the device. But that is not how the capacitor is defined in the sense. This implies for us, this picture, that there is a charge associated with the current flowing through the device because current is defined as the rate of flow of charge. We'll apply the definition shortly, but for us, Q is defined as C times V. Okay, so let me use lowercase V and uppercase C. The unit of C is the farad, okay, and this is called as capacitance. And microfarad nanofarads are typical C, uh, so let me put in some numbers here, one microfarad, I'm just throwing this out, 10 nanofarads, are typical C values used on a breadboard. The point is a farad is a pretty large capacitor if you follow, sta or if you follow standard capacitor, quote unquote standard capacitor design physical capacitor design, but you can have super caps from companies like EMC squared, okay, which can store a farad in a very small um, volume, if you will. But again, we're not going to talk about all that. For us, Q is simply CV, okay, and of course, Q, the unit of Q is the Coulomb, okay, Coulomb, and the unit of V is the volt, okay, but from here, if you take the derivative with respect to time and assume C is constant, okay, we get I equals 
C D V D T by the product rule. Okay, so bottom line is there is just like the IV relationship of a resistor, there is an IV relationship for the capacitor. However, the capacitance is defined in terms of charge voltage. Okay. So you shouldn't forget this picture. Uh, there is an equation that corresponds to this picture, and from here you get I is C D V D T. Okay. So what are some of the properties of the capacitor? So note. Number one, the energy stored in a capacitor with capacitance, capacitance C and voltage, let's call this VF, is energy capacitor is one half C. Oops. Vf squared and it's pretty easy to derive and a note I'm only going to do like RC okay in the sense uh, if you're not reading the book you should be reading the book especially for RL like uh, the RL resistor inductor circuit is the dual of the RC circuit okay we talked about duality in lecture when we talked about series and parallel resonance so the idea is very similar if you can do RC you can do RL so please read the book make sure you can do RL as well so why I'm, why I'm saying that is the, the energy associated with the capacitor is one half C V F squared. The energy associated with the inductor is going to be one half L I final squared, where L is the inductance. So I'm going to derive this. Okay. Uh, so here's the derivation, and you should do this this derivation for the inductor as well. Anyway, so we know that power is defined as the rate of doing work okay so when we integrate well before we do that and power instantaneous power is v times i okay is dw dt and then if we use the iv relationship for a capacitor we get dw dt is i again assuming the passive sign convention is valid I is C times dV dt, so we can rewrite it like this. And now, if I integrate both sides from t equals zero, uh, well, let's do this. I'm going to apply the some of the basic theorems in calculus, and now I can write this as W equals zero to W equals some final energy, right? So in other words, I'm assuming that there's no voltage across the cap initially, and we put a final voltage of Vf across it. So now what will happen is this will become Ec equals C times V squared over 2 from 0 to V final. So we basically get 1 half C V final squared with the units of energy obviously being the joule. Okay. So there it is. It's point number 1. Okay. Point number two, if you look at this IV relationship again, so let's look at again the QV, okay? So when other people ask for the characteristic plot of a capacitor, right? Oops. So you, can, you don't give them an IV plot like a resistor. An IV plot is a straight line. For a capacitor, you have to put a you have to draw a charge voltage function. Okay. Now, continuing, but if you go to I equals C D V D T implies once capacitor is charged to V equals V final volts. So in other words, a constant I is zero. Okay. So 
In other words, a capacitor acts like an open circuit to at steady state okay and this is very important once a constant voltage has developed across it and I say con and I emphasize constant voltage because if you recall so let me write, also write this in red if you recall EE 2060 that is AC analysis the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J omega C this, this is equal so this can be written as 1 over omega C at a phase angle of negative 90 degrees okay note that the magnitude of 1 is 1 over omega C which implies as omega goes to 0 magnitude of ZC tends to infinity this is modeled by an open circuit okay thus 1 does still imply that for a constant so constant is also referred to as DC or omega going to zero so voltage across the cap the I through the cap is zero amps so there is no contradiction here you have to understand that we are talking about again constant voltage inputs so continuing with this idea of constant voltage input point number three is this is something you have not seen in 2060 most likely I so again let's draw the picture so here is C here is V here is I this implies again I equals C dV dt all right so let's call the equation one again one implies voltage across a capacitor cannot change instant here instantaneously because delta V divided by delta T tends to infinity if delta T so if there's an instantaneous is changed it goes to zero delta V finite okay. so you need an infinite amount of current to make this voltage change in instantaneous or zero time and it's not physically possible so this is the uh, third idea so let me box all these ideas okay so the way we see all these ideas in action is if we look at the RC circuit okay so let's look at a circuit so here it is okay so it has an single well an RTA just do it like this VTH okay and then here's our capacitor that is this circuit here connected at terminals AB could be any linear circuit with voltage source and resistors but the point is you only have voltage source and resistors not an inductor because then it will become higher order okay and so from 2050 you should know 
how to simplify any circuit with VTH and RTH. Of course, we're talking about linear circuits. And we will, as you will see from the whole problems, we'll, we will use ideas from obviously from 2050. But anyway, one of the things we're going to do is let's write, well, let's write out the differential equation uh, describing the circuit. And well, the reason why you get a differential equation is because of the IV relationship of the capacitor. So VTH is going to be IR. So let's compute the voltage across the capacitor VC. So in that case, it's going to be RTH times C dVc dt, which is the current flowing in the circuit, plus Vc, right? So, and then we need an initial condition. So let's write Vc of 0 minus is V initial. Okay, and we'll talk about all the 0 minus and stuff shortly. But for now, mm, so let me make this out as well. And Vth as a function of time is a constant. Okay, so V final times u of t. So in other words, therefore what we have is, if you look at the voltage, okay, you basically have some v final, okay, but we multiply by what is called u of t, which is the unit step function. Okay. So u of t let me define it like the way it's defined in the book, right? So the book introduces a discontinuity. I mean, obviously it is discontinuous, but at, at one it's undefined. So let me do it like that. So u of t is zero for t less than zero, one for t greater than zero. This is called the unit step function, okay? So you multiply these two, this implies so the multiplication for a different color. Implies that VTH looks something like this, and of course I assume that V final is positive, right? Oops, let me go back here. You can, it can be negative, or it doesn't matter as long as it's a constant. So it's zero here, okay, and then over here you get V final. And we're running out of time, so let's do this. Okay, so here's the setup in the sense we have a first order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients forced by a constant input. Now the point of this u of t is all the action before t equals zero, okay, has been captured by this initial condition. So we, in other words, magically this capacitor had uh, v initial volts across it. And then, so using going back to red, what we did so this implies this, okay, this picture. So we had this V final voltage source with a switch that closes at T equals zero, right? And we had this basically, quote unquote, magical RTHC circuit in the sense that the initial voltage across this capacitor, there's no leakage. Okay. Zero minus is the initial and this voltage doesn't leak. So at t equals zero, we turn on the source, okay? Which is equivalent to closing the switch. Note that this need not be zero In the sense we could have at t equals, I don't know, some t naught, we could have Vth of t is some V final u of t minus t naught, okay? 
in this case, T naught is zero. But the bottom line is, this is the picture that goes, if you want, to uh, this is the switch. This is the picture with the switch that goes with the circuit. But the bottom line is, where we'll continue next time is we'll solve this differential equation, and you'll notice it has a very elegant form. So I guess we'll spend the first half of next lecture solving this um, circuit, okay? And the second half, we'll do like interpretations of this. And like I said, the derivation's very similar for the RL circuit. So I'll just uh, set that up towards the end of next lecture and that covers chapter seven. So in actuality, in the next lecture, I said I was going to do examples. Instead, let's finish up the concepts. And once you get the concepts, uh, you can work on the book problems and all of course once we get the concepts in class We'll be doing a lot of problems. Okay. All right. See your next lecture